So, hello, hello. Hope everybody can hear me. Uh, first of all, a loud thank you for being here this late in the evening. It's a very exhausting day, fully packed with a ton of awesome content so far. So it's cool to see so many people show up in the evening. It's amazing. And yeah, today I'm going to talk to you about Vue and how to scale it in an existing stack. So why is this interesting? In general, I realize very often you don't have the luxury of working on a completely fresh greenfield project where I say, I can start everything from scratch, I have control over every aspect. Very often you have an existing application and you say, I want to adopt something modern, a new tech, and move it into my stack. And one of the important pieces when doing this, uh, adding new technology to your stack is always a very high investment. It's not only a high investment like money-wise, it kind of takes a ton of your time. It takes a lot of commitment from everybody on the team in general. It's like the company is investing in this new technology. Eventually, if you back something that is not sustainable, then you have to switch again. So it's like kind of risky change to do at one point. But also, it's a very necessary change. Um, very often, we have to adapt new technologies, have to move it into our stack to kind of use everything that new technologies bring to us, that we have a better developer experience, that we have better tooling in general, and so, so that's quite an important change. But one thing I want to emphasize that always, if you choose something, whatever it is, there should always be a why. Why do you want to bring it to your stack? And one thing, if we talk about Vue, for example, there's very often like competing tech will run in parallel on your front end. So if you say you have something like Angular running before or React or whatever, and you add Vue, then you suddenly have like two libraries that would take care of the same domain. And they, you need to kind of manage them in a way to run in parallel because you need to transition over probably. And at this point, the big question is always, where do you draw the line? How do you make like, OK, the clean separation where the one technology ends, the other one starts. Um, also in, tech, in development, in your team, kind of who is responsible for what? How do you bring new people on? How do you scale it in the team? There's a, a lot of really tough questions to answer. And if we talk about something like Vue, we know Vue audits oh, an amazing framework and an amazing library for building, for example, single page applications. But to be a realistic, very often a single page application isn't the immediate goal directly or something is not possible or it doesn't make any sense at all to do this as your main target. You just want to benefit what Vue brings to us. So hi, I'm Roman Kuba. Um, I'm senior software engineer at a company called CodeChip. And yeah, you can find me on Twitter and at CodeBrio. So I'm going to try something. First of all, who is familiar with Vue.js? Oh, quite a lot. That's amazing, so we will be a little faster. Um, for the other ones who have never heard of Vue or didn't use it a lot or so, I have a little experiment. I try to explain the basics of Vue.js in 60 seconds, so bear with me. Um, so first of all, if we look at an instance that we have here on the left side, we see, okay, we have a new Vue instance. It's basically just an object we initiate. It has an element reference where you can say, oh, this is how we bind it to the DOM. We also can return data. Data is like something like your key value that you assign on your object, what's basically nothing more than a key value uh, definition. Then we have a template that could define how our markup should look like eventually. We have computer properties. They're similar to data, but also they use a function and they cache the value, so they're a little bit more powerful than data, and they will update if anything else changes. And we have methods what are just functions. On the right side, we see like we can call name, first name, and other thing directly on the instance. And if we even change the name, we can call first name and it's updated automatically. And we call the function like log name and get the function there. Yeah, well, we're almost in time. So, jump to the next one. So, and why I'm talking to you about today about scaling view in an existing stack, um, I can tell you I've been there, we've done that. Um, we adopted Vue at a very early phase at 0 0.11, so it's quite some time ago. We have almost for two years of running Vue in production. And we had a stack that was very much dictated by jQuery, by Angular, by CoffeeScript, a lot of technologies that kind of were carried over at one point. They were just part of the stack at this point. The next thing is we didn't have a lot of resources. We had the point where, say, we need to adopt something, we want to build new features, but we didn't have a large team. We were a small startup. It was basically me 
doing the whole front end of the application. Um, and also, we had to work under certain time constraints because like, you need to deliver features in a quite a fast pace. Um, and also, at the same point, we had to serve our application to a large amount of users. We have like over 15,000 users using the application on a daily basis. So how do you progress it? You cannot say, I do a feature freeze for one year and say, OK, yeah, let's update everything to view. And so suddenly everything is good. And then I lost this one year I will never make up again. And especially in the startup culture, it's like your company is probably dead if you don't do anything new in one year. Um, and also, we were a Rails application in this case. And it was kind of a monolith of the older times. So it's very backend heavy. Like a lot of templates were generated on the back end. And yeah, not an ideal scenario to bring in a super modern JavaScript framework. And especially in the beginning, it feels like you against the team to a certain degree. There's a lot of discussions happening. Why should we use a new technology that I know is working? Yeah, but it's not good. So there's a lot of back and forth. Uh, but whatever happens if you do this in your own company, if you have, like, have to fight this war, um, the important information is just like, eventually, if you want to do this or commit, you need the whole commitment of the team. So it should be more you and the team go hand in hand and say, OK, let's go in this technology. Let's use this and let's move to it together because you never can do this on your own. And what worked the best for us is how, it, in general, just split up the process into different phases. Phase number one. Let's reduce all the things. Reduce them as much as possible. What do I mean by reducing? That sounds kind of like vague. Um, for example, in our case, we need to decide on one kind of language. We had CoffeeScript. We had like intermediate JavaScript. We had like modern JavaScript. So we had like a lot of fragmentation in our code base. Ideally, decide on one language. Ideally, the modern JavaScript. So maybe port over what you have. Um, also, remove the unknowns. like. If there are like weird functions in there that you don't really know what they're doing, what is this kind of have this any side effects, try to get rid of those as much as possible because whatever you want to do next or so, everything that you don't fully understand or that's carried over for years, um, try to get rid of it as soon as possible. And use this moment to refactor little bits and pieces of your application. So what do you mean by refactor? In our case, we had, for example, CoffeeScript, and this is a simple script for kind of doing a click event handler. We say, OK, we click on something, we get an HX request, something. The first process could be let's just port it over to kind of plain JavaScript to say, OK, like even the plain field a little bit. But why not make an extra step and just say, I don't need to query at all at this point. I want to reduce as much as possible and just port it over to plain JavaScript because JavaScript offers everything that we need to do in this case. Um, and once you have like a solid foundation, that's a good point when you want to introduce Vue. And we're here to talk about Vue, so let's dive a little bit into it. So introducing Vue is actually quite easy to do. So and for you to make it very kind of easy and approachable and kind of to really focus how can I make it run everywhere, the first ideal goal is to choose a very manageable target. Use something where, say, a small feature maybe, where you know exactly how it starts, how it ends, how it behaves, how it looks, how it feels, like where you know everything. Because once you start building it, oh, let's build this new feature using Vue, um, there's a lot of things unknowns again that we shouldn't have there. Like we don't know, feature requirements change all the time, especially new features. So try to avoid this as much as possible. Build something where you really know the end and the beginning. Also, for Vue itself, define a very clear entry point. Where will Vue take off? Um, I saw in the beginning a lot of people like struggle, say, OK, this is Vue, and how can you use Vue with jQuery, for example, to manipulate this dumb stuff there? Um, try not to go this way. Use what Vue offers for you out of the box. And Vue makes it very easy, because you can, for example, just load it from a CDN directly on your page and progress your way from there. And yeah, as I said, Use what Vue offers for you. Um, to have a small example, because we're all starving for code, I guess, um, let's say this is our feature, our ominous feature. In this case, we wanted to build our status page indicator, would basically show what's the status of the current page if something in our infrastructure is not working properly. Um, so that's our entry point. I define the entry point very clear and say, OK, Vue, here's the feature, take over from here. Our Vue script, for example, would look like this, where we just hook into it, Render stator. So in this case, like nothing super fancy special. Um, the first struggle we have maybe we want to update the status. And one thing we had, okay, how do we get like 
information from the outside into my view instance. And at this point, one of the easiest way of getting it there is just use data properties. You can assign like the data properties on the DOM node, and you can directly read them off view. For this, you can perfectly leverage the view lifecycle it offers for you. How does this look? At our same code example from before, just we do, we create a new fetch status method, what would go to the API or endpoint and call the new status and assign it. But we use, for example, before mount. So we really hook into the lifecycle and say, before we overrule it with anything, our template, then we want to read the data set and get the URL. And we use this one to kind of fetch it from the back end. That's super handy, especially like if you have a very backend heavy system where maybe a lot of domains kind of get generated to a certain degree or have like secret tokens. Uh, you don't want to store them in your JavaScript code. Ideally, you want to pass them in or they get rendered on the page in general. So this is a very easy way of getting it in there. Um, here's a small tip that uh, was also very helpful for us at one point. If you have a super backend system or so and you have a lot of templates that you have already built to a certain degree, Vue allows you out of the box to use like script X templates. So you could render it directly in there and just reference it inside Vue. So in this case, like with template and use the app or so. Um, this was super helpful, especially in the transition phase. You don't be forced to port everything over, especially we were using Slim, um, what's like a, a puck like language. So it's not ideal. But once we reach this phase, we're pretty much ready for a better build process. We say, okay, we, ha we have confidence in Vue. We know how it kind of works. We feel very good about it. Um, so the most important information here is I can give you like Webpack is your friend. So if you have not used Webpack or so, um, so it's like a package bundler. And there, I know there are a bunch of them out there. And it feels these days it's super modern to build your own package bundler to one degree. But Use something that the community has adopted, and Webpack is growing really, really well. The community is kind of thriving in this one, so I can highly recommend it. And what does this mean, like in kind of vision of our tech application or our stack? So if we treat it like this, before we had any kind of build process in our application, and all our files, whatever we did or so, they're running through a pipeline, and we have like one gigantic JavaScript file or whatever built, and this is the thing that gets served to the app. By introducing our new view file, we initially maybe started by adding it to the old stack where we say, okay, there is the file, just squash it together with all the rest and serve it down there. But maybe that's not ideal for us kind of moving forward. We want to have more fine control of what we're doing. We want to use all the features that view has to offer for us. So that's perfect for us to maybe build up our new ideal build process in parallel, where we say all our new view files are going to be served through Webpack, where we have fine control over everything, and the important piece here is there shouldn't be any kind of dependencies between those systems. So aim for a very clean separation. There shouldn't be any globals that bleed over. Uh, kind of don't try to port, oh, I wrote this library, just port it over. If you're not super excited about uh, the state of this library or the function that you wrote, then spend the time in refactoring before porting it over. Because otherwise, what you do is like you start to carrying the stuff that you actually hate over to the new one or so, and that's kind of like leaves a, bit of, a bitter taste at one point. Um, also, by doing this, if we kind of really separate what we're doing there, this is the perfect chance for us to introduce view single file components. So who here has not used single file components so far? Only very few, so we, it's very impressive, a good view crowd. Um, so if you have never heard of a view single file component, it's basically really a file that has like a template, a script tag, a style tag, everything in there. In this case, we just wrapped what we had before there. But now it will get interesting. So are you ready? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's the spirit, that's the spirit. So one tip, if anybody asks you, are you ready? You always say, one ready. That's like the best answer. It always works. Um, so let's build an SPA right now. OK, didn't you just say, don't build an SPA? It doesn't make a sense or so? Um, yes, I said this, and it's still true to a certain degree. But we're now at a point, we don't want to treat like our app and port it over to an SPA. We want to make it a little bit more different. In this case, let's treat a part of our application as a single page application. Let's build it just a part of there. In this case, this could be our user page or user management is its own little single page application. What this allows you is you can treat different pages as their own SPAs. Like if you have one for user management, one for 
subscriptions or what anything, like they don't actually share any kind of logic with each other. So it doesn't make sense to kind of go down the route and force kind of like the routing and everything on top of it, because this is something you have running and working already out there. So just use leverage what you have and say, okay, let's treat this part of our application as a logical piece and kind of piece it together. Um, and also, by doing this, this is for us the perfect time to go all in on the Vue ecosystem, what it has to offer for us. For example, add Vuex or Vuex. I'm not sure on the pronunciation, to be honest, still. Um, and Vuex, if you have never heard of it, it's like a flux store, similar to Redux, kind of it gives you a nice state management. And at this point, I can just reference a blog post from GitLab. Like, interestingly, they went through a similar phase like we did at the same time, and to say, okay, yeah, we want to port everything over to Vue. And after one year, they made this blog post where they say, like, okay, this is our experience from porting over Vue to our GitLab application. And in this one year report, they say, okay, just use Vuex. Like they started uh, as, as I did, as a lot of people do, it's like, okay, I have my components, I manage my state partially in the components and kind of shift state around. At one point, it will just be, it's, too hard to maintain at one degree. There's a lot of complexity moving in there, and I can just recommend user state management. As soon as you say, okay, I have like one, two, three components that need to share some kind of data, just go in user state management. It's like it comes with a very little cost and gives you high maintainability. So if we also look at our application bundle package delivery system that we've built right now, this is also the right point to say, I don't want to serve both of them. I want to build like my SPA so they should be served either or. I want to say, okay, if there's an old page maybe that I didn't come around to port yet, just deliver the old code. If I'm on one of the new pages that come through Wii U and Webpack and it's my full SPA that's working, just deliver this one. This should have everything that it needs and it will be very good kind of separation of concerns if you build this application and it can scale you stuff individually. And you can also start splitting up everything in different packs. You can be very fine-grained in what you do. You can have a global pack, an application pack, like a lot of middle things that kind of make sense for you in your application. Um, the next point for us was, okay, if we have all this kind of sophisticated package system, the next part is we want to have a very convenient way to kind of adding view. And again, we say, like, we make it very clear where view starts and the other stuff ends. So in this case, what we did, for example, in Slim, we created a small helper. What says, okay, if we call Vue app and give it users or so, it should do something for us. And if you're more familiar with PHP, this is how it could look like in PHP, for example. It's just like my little helper I run on the page. And what it does for us, it should automatically pick the right file for us and create the entry point that we want. So what do we actually do using this kind of system? We create this Vue app helper, and it creates kind of some kind of HTML entry point for us that we say, okay, this is dynamically generated, but always looks alike. And I can even start using this kind of system to say, let's pass on data and information that I already have. Like, very often we tend to, oh, I don't know how to put it in there, or I want to go full, not on the API system, and so now I want to pull everything in there. Information, like you rendered your users before in the old system, so you probably have the information of the users on the page already, so just try to leverage what you have. In this case, we, again, we just pass it through some data properties kind of makes the whole transition a little faster, and we can build in the API at one point later again. So all that's left for us to do now with this little piece of code there is we need to mount view, we need to add our store, and we need to pass in some data, or back actually the data that we just assigned to it. So that's now the interesting part, so bear with me. So what we did, we created an app function. The app function should be like so smart to build our application, to mount everything accordingly, and take care of everything. So what we expect is like the name of our application or the, the tag that we generated. So we used users before, so we want to expect that we pass in users to one degree. We want to launch the root component, what could be kind of the layout or whatever you're going to use. And maybe we want to pass in a custom store that we need on this page. Again, we said we want to use Vuex, so just go ahead and say view use Vuex and put it in there. Uh, the next part is we know how our node looks like. So we know that our helper generates it in a certain degree. So we can say document query select and just select kind of the DOM node as we know that our helper generated it for us. 
then is, okay, let's take our store, and this is for us the right point also to kind of have some default behavior for store. If you have some kind of like modules or certain functions or method or actions in the store, let's define your default store. You don't need to create it in every store file. This is the perfect place to say, okay, this is how it should look like, and then just merge the custom store that it pays in for this page with kind of default store, and then you have like all the functionality of the global ones and more of this custom one that you need for this page. And then we create a new props property where we just cry, okay, we know already that we can read everything off of data set. So what we try, we just try to read every data set on there as much as possible. If there's like stringified JSON, we try to parse it. Um, otherwise, we just assign it. Um, so I guess we didn't cover props in the initial segment or so, but I guess you're all familiar with props. Props are the way of passing information from one component to another. So basically, the data stream downwards is always passing it down through props. And now we're at the interesting part. We now want to launch our application, our instance, our view instance. So what we do is we call a new generic instance that we call app. We pass in the store that we actually want to use. And then we render just the component on the page that we want to use. That's also a perfect use case for a render function because it's like super dynamic and will always react to what we ever pass down. And then we just mount it on the page. And suddenly we have like this app function is super dynamic or so, and whatever we call it or so, we always mount a root instance for us on the page. And the interesting piece is how would we call this? So for example, our main mount function is nothing more than those four lines where we import the app function, for example, we import the store that we're going to use from users. We import the main users layout component. And then we just say app users run this. And that's like super generic code. And that's very awesome because like it makes it repeatable. And our template underneath could look something like this. That's actually taking care of like rendering users and rendering out the list. And the interesting piece here is all we need to do is in our main instance where we start, we kick off the logic of our SPA. All we need to take care is of the props. So we now have this dynamic linking of data assigned kind of values that we create through our helpers, through kind of our backend system. And all we need to do in our main instance, we just consume that everything as props. And that's now the interesting phase where we say, okay, let's get ready to scale the whole system. Um, so again, if we treat our application, we see we have this multiple single page applications we have like those packs popping up everywhere and say, okay, this is how we structured. Um, nothing fast that you need to kind of build one pack for one file or so. Kind of be creative, try to reuse as much as possible, create a kind of like a smart system around it. And if we have something like a, a list that we need to render or filter or whatever, if this is all the logic that we need, nothing holds us back from using it on one page and reusing the same pack on another page, maybe in the front end and the admin interface or so. Um, but you suddenly can start, okay, I can move my packs and recreate some of the single page applications across all of our application and modernize the whole stack. And the other interesting or important part, kind of, as we said, make it kind of repeatable to a certain degree, prepare some kind of scaffolding or generators. Um, you don't want to go through the hoop every time and update a new page or so. I don't want to say, oh, I have to copy this over, this over, this over. That's like super annoying and it's kind of like a source of error to a certain degree. Um, so just prepare some generators for you. What we did, for example, we created a Rails generator that we just call Rails Generate, a new view app, and it takes care of creating all the files for us. Like the, the entry file, it has like all the app code in there already, so we don't need to do this every time. Um, we have our main view instance component it's loaded. We have our spec file there as well to kind of automatically start writing tests against it. And it gives us the information, oh, you create this new component, you should write tests against it. And if you don't write at least one single test or so, it will fail. Um, if you don't want to use Rails generators or you have a system that doesn't support this kind of stuff or you don't want to build it into your um, original system, there's also projects like Hygen um, that's like a node-based or JavaScript-based generator file. Um, you have to create like those template.est files or so, and then you can kind of scaffold them. But it's like the target should be that you create something that's reproducible and redoable. And something I can't emphasize enough is you should back everything up with good patterns and good specs. Um, yeah, like if you just go haywire on every application and build it one this way and the other one this way, um, yeah, 
that's kind of like leaving it in a not an ideal state if somebody else has to work with your code as well. And yeah, tests is something I can highly emphasize. And Vue has to offer something called Vue Test Utils, what's a perfect tool to give you kind of a lot of opportunities of, of testing Vue components and stores and everything. And if you do all this, there's like a lot of really good times ahead. And at this point, I want to reemphasize, I, I mentioned in the beginning that whenever we make the decision of adding a new technology, there should always be a reason, a why. At this point, I'm doing a dramatic drinking pause. And yeah, and the why. What was the why for us? Why did we do it? Why did we want to move in this direction? For example, we were on our testing suit. That wasn't ideal. We had a ton of acceptance tests, and because our stack before was kind of very cluttered and disorganized to a certain degree, we had acceptance tests to be like our safety net to say, OK, define for me that the page is kind of running, and I didn't test all the cases, but no, before shit blows up or so, I kind of get some kind of warning at least. Um, kind of using Vue and like the new tooling that it brought to us, one of the benefits was we could use something like unit or integration tests to a much higher and much more um, assuring degree than before, because we could kind of scale them up. Under unit tests, we use, for example, Chest as the test runner. That was kind of like super fast for us. Like we, even in development, like our acceptance test maybe took like five to six minutes to run for a whole suit. Uh, our unit test took like 10 seconds. So like if you think this of continuous delivery, kind of shipping your software all the time, like 10 seconds against like five minutes is like a huge time saver where it just will be faster. Um, the other thing is like we also want to have performance. We didn't want to play with like a technology in this case just to play with a modern tech. We want to say, okay, we want to have really good performance increases. And so, some backstory on this one, uh, we have one of our pages. It's like a build page. So basically, if we run automatic tests for your software, then you see basically the log output. Um, so it prints all everything that it would print on a terminal on the browser. And that's like maybe about 80,000 DOM nodes generated on the fly, depending on what kind of the size of your log is, or even more, because you need to colorize everything. And that's where our old system kind of was falling apart to a certain degree. Like two seconds was our initial loading time, but then the page even sometimes crashed when loading the logs because like our old code couldn't handle it. What we ended up having with is a system that was loading in 2.5 seconds compared to two seconds with the gain that the page was blazingly fast and no more crashes at all or so. There's a lot of wins for us in this whole transition. Um, there's also, when we talk about scaling, we very often tend to think about like technical scaling. How can I kind of like load it on a CDN or kind of spread it everywhere? Um, if you kind of build a good application or a good team or company, like the most important question about scaling is how do you scale your team? Because you need new people working on the application, on the software. You will have new people come on board. And if you have no clear path of scaling your team, of having people like on board and working and being productive soon, and kind of like share code to a certain degree or know that they can work on each other's code, uh, that's also not ideal. So you have to keep it in mind. And for us, one of our big wins by using something like Vue, in this case, we suddenly could build features faster and more reliable. Everybody was able to work on its own like feature in a certain degree and without being in fear of kind of breaking or killing something else's code because like they're separated SPAs and packs. So that was pretty good. And if you kind of have to work with some backend engineers, uh, one of our good things that we saw as a result, uh, in our old code, if you ask one of the backend engineers, hey, could you fix this, or is this something you would feel comfortable? Like, they would say no, because like, it, the code didn't make a lot of sense to them. But when we introduced them to Vue and say, hey, this is how we build them, and we gave them a short introduction, okay, this is how we will now structure everything and how it's built. Like, even our backend engineers, who usually hate JavaScript to one degree, they say, okay, I feel comfortable in making changes in there. And this was another huge win, because like, you're not the only person now being able to understand and being able that the ship keeps afloat. And as a summary, all I can say, like, Vue made this whole transition like very, very enjoyable. Like, I haven't seen any kind of technology that makes it that easy for us. And why? Because I feel like Vue is just like JavaScript done right to a certain degree. 
Thank you.